this is Randall King, and you're listening to Texas Toast Podcast. A big cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Texas Toast Podcast. And I say big cheers because I am welcoming Randall King to the podcast. Hello, Randall. It's so amazing to have you here on the podcast. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I followed you since the beginning. Of course, I was in radio when you were first coming up. And uh, just what you've done with your music is amazing. And and sticking with your standards and your style, it's just gotten better and better. And you have been so busy. We're going to talk about your your current album, uh, current radio and streaming releases. But you're coming off your first ever uh, European tour, the Neon Overseas, which I love the name of that. So what was that like for you? <laughs> well, we were just bringing the honky tonks over to uh, over to Europe. Uh, it's our first time getting to go over there, and you know, I cut my teeth on the honky tonks here. So we were going out and playing these uh, basically rock clubs. So we were just bringing, uh, bringing the honky tonk and the country music over there to them. How long were you over there? Almost 24 days. So wow. we did, we did a total of 12. 13, 13 shows, and there was a there was a there was a time period there in the middle that we did nine shows in twelve days, and so I was just back to back to back to back to back. I don't know how my voice held up, but it did. So it's, oh, it's good. pretty good. wild. It's, a, it's the hardest touring I've ever done in my life. We trained through Germany, which I don't recommend. If you're gonna go over there, just get a van, spend the money. But really, you know, we we trained, and it was a uh, it was a challenge. Mm-hmm. So you've been putting out music um, basically since 2016, your first EP came out. Let's talk about your background and coming from the Amarillo area, Hereford, Texas, Texas specifically. And were you singing when you were young? Were you one of those that had the guitar like when you were three? Or when did music come into your life and you started songwriting and playing around with it? Yeah, uh, I've been singing since I could talk. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, it was just something that came natural to me. Uh, pitch, you know. Uh, my, my dad looked at my mom one day because I sang so much. I was about probably six or years old. And uh, we were riding around in the Suburban, and I was in the the, the front middle, like the front bench seat. Uh, mom and dad were up in the front, and uh, I was just singing. Was over and I'm pretty sure it was Baby Blue, George Strait, if I remember right. And uh, just over and over and over. My mom was like, man, we love your singing, but like, just just listen to the radio for a little while. Let, let George sing it. And I was like, all right. And I'd shut up for a little bit. And then about five minutes later, I'm back singing. Randall, baby, now come on. I said, all right. Five minutes later, back singing. Randall, I, was, I know. So I'd get up and I'd go to the back of the Suburban and, uh, I'm just singing my little heart out. And my, my mom and dad talking to my dad looked at my mom and goes, that boy don't shut up. We're just going to get him a guitar and see what he does. And I'm seven years old when my dad got me my first guitar. And I uh, grew up in Hereford. And we'd drive to Canyon, Texas, just up the road. It's about a 30-minute drive uh, once a week. Go up there and do guitar lessons with a, with a gentleman by the name of Rick Suddeth. He was incredible. He was missing missing two fingers, and he could play electric guitar, acoustic guitar, steel, fiddle, mandolin, mandolin banjo, piano, uh, saxophone. Like the dude, the guy played. He played everything under the sun, and he was phenomenal. And uh, I was very very fortunate to have him as my instructor. He was very patient, and I was I was not really. No, it was. He did a really he, he did a great job. He's got a lot of students that did went on to do great things in, in West Texas. And uh, yeah, he's passed on. He's passed on now, but yeah, he's a he's a great man. Wow, love that story. And so then after um you you went to Texas Tech for a while, but you kind of set yourself up for success with your studies mm-hmm. at college. Uh, well, not at Texas Tech. I didn't set no. myself up for nothing at Tech. Uh. I went to I went to tech for a year and a half. My first semester at tech, I did really good. I almost made the dean's list, was focused. It was new, so it was exciting to be going to school and I was excited. Uh and then my second 
semester at Tech, I pretty much just stayed in the dorms and wrote songs. Uh, and then by my third, and, and I was didn't have a good semester. It was like all D's and an F. And then uh, my next semester there, like I didn't even finish the semester. I just wasn't going to classes. Uh, I was just more interested in writing songs and, mm-hmm. and uh, having fun. And I was wasting money, wasting my dad's money. And uh, I will never forget the phone call to my father of figuring out when I finally figured out what I was going to do. And I called him and was like, hey, just so you know, like, I really appreciate everything you've done. I know you borrowed against your 401k. You did a bunch of stuff to help me out. You spent money. Uh, and I know you wanted me to get a degree. I said, I'm still going to get a degree, but I ain't going to get it from Texas Tech. I'm going to go mm-hmm. to South Plains College down the road and I'm going to. I'm going to learn sound technology. I want to know how sound works. And I think that's going to do more for me than, than anything. And I went to South Plains, learned sound technology because I've got a great program out there. Uh, so I learned studio work. That way I knew, I just wanted to educate myself because I knew I wanted to play music. It's not, it's what, I, what I was built to do, what I was born for. And uh, I wanted to be able to go in the studio and know what I was doing and not and that way I had control and not give someone else all the all the cards and then they're changing my style and doing things I don't want and I can't explain to them why it's not good. I just don't like it. Like I want to be I want to be smart enough to to go, here's why I don't like it. And so uh that and I thought like if anything I'll just engineer my own records one day, but I don't think I'm I'm that's I'm not interested in that. <laughs> so, well, at least you got, got yeah, at least... like, let them do <laughs> uh, but you got that background and being in the area that you were was, you know, strong music city there at Texas Tech. And so you've moved on, you've done so much, so much music, so many hits, so much streaming. And I think I was I was really excited for you when we all got word that you got the invitation to play the Grand Old Opry. Tell me what that moment was like for you. Oh, yes, ma'am. So Marty Stewart asked me actually here at this office. We were riding together and uh, he went to take a photo with me and my manager had it on uh, video. And I was like, like, well, it's on video. And I was like, well, get it off. Just swipe. Put it on photo. What's happening? And Marty was like, it's on video. This guy was like, yeah. So he goes, hey, well, Randall on behalf of the Grand Ole Opry. We would like to invite you out. And I was like, what? That was, that was a surprise. All right. Hell yeah. So I got to, uh, I got to make my debut in March of 22. Um, and then we went back a year later on my anniversary of it, the one year anniversary of my debut, played the Opry again. And it was just something special. Now, for the first time I was there, I dedicated it to my sister, Leanna. Um, wore my black. I had a, a wonderful lady in Fort Worth named uh, Vera do my my jacket. It was, it was all black. So my sister, those my sister's favorite colors. Uh, had a yellow rose because that was her flower. And the yellow rose was all down in it. I uh, had my logo on the back, all all shined up and rhinestoned. And uh, you know, inside pocket, she put a little flamingo for my sister because that was her bird. So, and then also her signature was on the wrist. Uh, it's the same signature that's on the the cover of the album that's titled after her that I dedicated to her, the little EP. Uh, so it is, there was a, there was a whole lot. I mean, I had my whole family there, uh, my girl, my dog. And it was, I literally got a dog the the week of my Opry debut. Uh, it's probably one of the craziest weeks of my life, really looking back on it, because made my Opry debut. It was in the middle of uh, a two week run with Clay Walker and Tracy Lawrence. And, wow. uh, we did the C. We did my CD release party for Shot Glass the next day, and then I dropped the record uh, mm-hmm. that Thursday night. Um, got a dog in the middle of it. Got my dog, my Rottweiler. Just wow, craziest, craziest week, man. God, God was like, "Hey, you're doing all the right things." Like, here you go. And it was just, it was wild. What did you name your dog? Name Zadkiel. We call him Zaddy. Little Zaddy Daddy. Well, it- <laughs> love it love it well mm-hmm. let's go and let's jump into shot glass a little bit talk about the album that was your first major label um major label album to be released with warner music in nashville and i have to tell you that the specific song shot glass that is just epic and it's the title cut so how did you pick that to be the title cut for the album 
uh, it was the best song on the record. Uh, <laughs> it's a phenomenal song. Just the first time I heard it, I, I fell in love with it. My manager, Scott, showed it to me. He didn't pitch it to me. He showed it to me. He was like, check out this new Tony Lang song. I knew you'd appreciate it. And I listened to it, and I was like, dude, I, I love that. Like, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. So like, what's happening with that song? And he was like, well, I was like, is it available? He goes, well, no, it's it's going to get pitched from the top down. Like, it's going to go through Blake, Tim. Like, it's going top down. Like, it's going to get cut from somebody. It'll get pitched to them all. I was like, you don't think I can cut it? He goes, you'll never get it. And I went, we'll see. And uh, two years later, we were looking for outside songs. And uh, I asked Scott, I was like, you think the shot glass is available? And he goes, worth asking. So he asked, and it happens to be under BMG, which is my publishing company. And sure enough, nobody had taken it. It was still sitting there. So I was like, I want this song. Not only do I want this song, I want it to be the title of the record because in my mind, it's a reflection song. Mm-hmm. The words in it are, how did all this fit into a shot glass? You take a shot, you hit with memories. How did all, how did all this fit into a shot glass? And in my mind was, you get through listening to this record and you go, how did all that fit into a shot glass? You know? So true. So true. Another song I, I have to talk about is Roger Miller Light and Me. I absolutely love that one on the album. I thought, thank you. I wrote that with my buddy Brandon Kenny. We're big Roger Miller fans. He's one of the best to do it. Uh, he was just quirky with his songwriting. He would, he would, the dude would just make up words to fit his rhyme scheme. Like, right? it was just, it's just it's just incredible so underrated one of the one of the best ever did so we just we wanted to give a little tip the hat to him and uh we wrote a bunch of his song titles into the song basically and uh it was about drinking cold beer and tipping it back to old roger miller because that's all she left me she left me <laughs> a stack of right right roger miller vinyl and, and the cold beer in the fridge bye girl mm-hmm and, and of course, included on this is You and a Honky Tonk. And um, that's just such an epic, another song that's just, you have to have in your library, you know, no matter what. And just the streaming on that, that was actually one of our picks. We do like an end of year uh, review and like these, we did these awards last year. And that was one of our picks for our top song. And I know that, oh, I know you. outside of our little video podcast, that song has gotten many accolades. <laughs> it has. Uh, that song has really put my touring on the mat um mm-hmm. man we've we just watched an explosion with with our fan base at shows uh i remember a time where couldn't draw 50 people um uh, i had a little ep called i'm gonna bull it out we were drawing like 50 people in these bars and trying to tour and make a living when I put out my self-titled record and it went from 50 to 100 to 150 to 250 to, to 400 500 and then you know, uh, started putting out other songs and watching and watching the building and drop shot glass and you and a honky tonk hit. And all of a sudden we're, you know, we go to North Carolina for the first time and put 2,300 people. So it's just, it's wild to watch, uh, watch the growth. And we go to Europe and sell out a whole tour. Like that's right. wild. Like we don't have a song on radio. So it's just the fans that have made us and putting out music that's real. Yes, the music that's real and the real sound that you have in in your music, and you uh, you do so much touring, but then you also have your King Fest. Uh, you did it for the first time this year yeah. in Nashville, and then you're going to be in Lukenbach. Oh man! And you got Braxton Keith with you. I'm like, oh, yeah. like that one right there that has been on my radar. John Stork, who his song okay. opens our podcast. We love John Stork. <laughs> like, yeah, he's from a, his little, his little town Beasley where he's from is just right up the road from me. But let's talk about your King Fest and how you put it to Nashville. And I think you want to expand it into other places. Yeah. So King Fest originated, uh, it really, it originated three years ago uh, during COVID in 2020. It was an idea that came to me and we wanted to take it to Lugenbach. And originally we were supposed to do the very first one was supposed to be uh, September of 2020 in Lukenbach. We had it on the books. We had Josh Ward, Tristan Merez, and Jake Worthington. And that was our lineup for the first one. And then, you know, uh, a two-week pandemic turned into 
whatever the hell they want to call it. And it shut down the world for longer than it was supposed to. And yeah. here we are uh, having to cancel the very first King Fest uh, 2020. So we just went in, just played to 600 people, you know, sold out on that, that front. And we just kept Jake on it, Jake Worthington. And then we shifted everything to the next year. So here comes fall 2021. We'll finally get to the very first King Fest. And we got it's us, Jake Worthington, Tristan Merez, and a young guy named Clay Hollis out of uh, <laughs> oh, Badass. That would Love Clay. Kick, kick the whole thing off with just took it by storm, man. Attitude sounded incredible. Uh, so it, we had like 2,100 people out there our very first time doing it. So, I mean, wow. took off. Uh, and then we did, we did it last year. We had Trent Woolman on direct support. We had Kylie Fry. Then Braxton Keith opened. He was the very first one on there. And after watching Braxton for the last year, I mean, the dude is just, mm -hmm. man, he's taking Texas by storm. He got all them young kids out there, all, all the, like, high school to or the college, just fanatics. So, and I love it, man. It's cool to watch because he's so honky tonk. And it just, he's like a, like a younger, like a, like a flashy John Party. Kind of means Kojo, man. Like he's just he's got this, yes. he's got something going on. He's great. Uh and he's killing it. So we were like, you know what? We'll do King Fest again in Lukenbach this year and uh just let Braxton be direct support. So we threw Braxton on there. We got John Stork and then kicking the whole thing off right at doors is the legendary Mr. Gary P. Nunn. Gary P. Nunn, yes. Texas <laughs> legend. And uh, oh, man, I'm, I'm so excited. I love Gary P. He's he's my boy. Just a flat out, flat out legend. It's gonna be great. Oh, and then Thanks we took it, we took it to Nashville this year too. So we had it right, had, right, right. Had back to back mm -hmm. nights uh, uh, at a honky tonk called the Nashville Palace up here, close to the Grand Ole Opry, one of my favorite places in Tennessee. Uh, Nashville Palace and Cahoots over in uh, Lebanon. I love, I love those places, man. And we sold out the palace last year. So we were like, well, let's do back to back nights, bring King Fest there, and we'll add, we'll just add to the bill and make, go big and go home. So we added, uh, Friday night we had Dre Milligan and Braxton Keith. And then Saturday we had Tyler Booth and John Stork. So we let, we let the two Texas guys, uh, that are on King Fest there, kick it off uh, each night. And uh, man, it was, it was, it was phenomenal. It was so much fun. And the Cornhole Tournament, you know, Saturday. There's uh, some badass dudes from Smoke em Outdoors that are a great hunting company. Uh, they're good buddies of mine. They, they buy the Cornhole Tournament for us. Like everything goes through them and uh, they bring the Cornhole out. And it's just, you know, it's for fun, it's for sport. You kind of get some of these crazy guys that are professional cornholers come out there yes. and, uh, just, we do it for fun yes. like i understand we do it for fun you, you'll win like a, a hunting trip and a buckle but like we do it for fun that's Don't right be the, i was actually flipping through the sports channels one day and they have they do have i'm sure you know that's why you brought it up they had professional cornhole tournament on espn yeah it's, it's real and i mean they're serious they're competitive dudes it's a sport it is a it's sufficiently a sport. So I mean, they're they're competitive dudes. I suck. Like I'm I'm alright. Like, but the way, when it comes to them them dudes, like they got they got technique. They've been they practice it. They they know what they're doing. And so they they'll come out and like if they don't, we have to really spell it out for them of like, hey, this isn't like a legit yeah. cornhole like official rules of like down to the inches of how everything's separate like that we do it for fun like we we know what to do but like we do it for fun man so don't come out here with your ego and crazy attitude like just we're here to have fun that's exactly right that's what it's about all about fun so that's just that's good stuff with king fest and you had mentioned john party so you're he's got his mr saturday night world tour coming up and you're going to be a part of that Yes, ma'am. Uh, so we got we got a few dates with him. Uh, I believe he had someone uh, in the spot, and they they unfortunately couldn't make it. So he we were like his we were his first call. He hollered up and we're like, absolutely. So we're going up. I'm doing Idaho. I'm trying to remember what we're doing. Idaho. Uh, 
I know we're doing Hershey, Pennsylvania. We're doing uh, we're doing Tulsa, Fort Worth. Uh, we got some we got some great dates with him, man. And I think Ella Langley's on the shows with us. Uh, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be high energy, a whole lot of fun. His fans are just fun anyway, but like, and he's high energy. So huh. with us bringing what we do to the mix, it's a it's gonna be a great, great, great run. Right. And you have so many great things going for you. And like, again, just looking at some of the stuff that got sent over to me, I was, I mean, I remember keeping up this with this when I was in radio, but you were named country artist to watch by Pandora, the boot and country now. And of course we've been watching you for a long time, but that is, that's, that's a, that's a sign. <laughs> it's, a, yeah, it's a big statement. Uh, we got a big record coming out. Uh, that we're working on right now uh, we've dropped a few songs already on it and uh yeah just watch out yeah what's your favorite part of uh being on stage what's some of your favorite songs to sing to the crowd when you're performing man that's hard i mean i love them all you know you know we don't oh, put things mm -hmm. in our set that we're like you know like we love we love every song we love the play and uh each song is different in the sense of like what I can do to work the crowd and find our moments. Uh, Cause to me, that's what, that's what makes the show is like, where you find your moments. What, what are you doing to capture someone's attention to make them just go, Holy shit. You know what I mean? Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. if you're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, you want you want those, like those wow factor moments. And uh, with what we've created with our set list, it's, it's so smooth. It's high energy. It's, it's it's a lot of those moments where you don't take your eyes off the stage so it's hard to pick my favorites uh i think if i had to i would say you know honky tonk mirror mirror and hey cowgirl mm -hmm. three of my favorite my favorites to play and then and then when i get when i get the opportunity to do it i'll fly away i don't do it oh, often yes mm -hmm. in the right headspace for it but i love playing i'll fly away and just laying back and hearing the crowd sing it mm -hmm. and, and not even sing it with them just let them take it like it's it's worship and it's yes. amazing to go from a honky tonk to a worship scene you know uh, but country i believe country music is the truth and country music is it's tied in uh, a lot with with the spiritual realm. And, and Absolutely. If you've been oh, to a Neil McCoy, yeah, Neil McCoy did that. The one of the last shows I went to, to see him and uh, it was yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, I, I wouldn't be where I am without God. I wouldn't be anything without God. Like, mm -hmm. I don't exist without him. I exist for him. So I'm blessed to have the opportunities that I, that I get to take the stage and, and especially have those moments where I can have Lots of people that came to just get loose, loud, and crazy in the words of old Kevin Fowler, and, <laughs> uh, and just worship for a second. Like it's it's a it's cool. It doesn't always get to happen that way, but when it does, man, it's it's special. It is special, and you know, and that's one thing that we talk about a lot in the industry. And as a fan, somebody that's worked in the industry, there's nothing like going to a live music show. Like you always walk away with a new friend. There's always a bonding experience. Mm -hmm. And then especially what you're talking about when it's that right crowd and that right moment to throw something like that in, it makes it even that more special. And it's something that you'll always remember and hold on to. Oh, absolutely. Well, we're excited about the uh, new stuff to come for you. And of course, when my baby's in boots, you got your streaming song out. We've covered both of those on the podcast. Everything we've been doing, we've just been dropping, we've been dropping out singles and put them out and see what they do. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but what it does for me, it creates new show moments that I can have with people and another reason to come to the show. So, and the songs are incredible, man. You know, we went with a new producer, Jared Conrad. Um, he's, he's done... Uh, a lot of Ian Munsick stuff. You know, he, he's great, man. He's a great engineer, great producer. We co-produce this record. Uh, man, it, it's, it's, it's different. It's got an edge to it. I mean, you've already heard some of the songs that have come out, so you've heard a little bit of the edge. Uh, songs like Burns Like Her versus yes. Babies and Boots, uh, Green Eyes Blue. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's it's just different. We've, we've got this... We've got this edge. We've got this smoky factor to it. Like I, I, 
two of my bigger influences uh, is Gary Allen and, and early Dirk Bentley. But the Dirks, I grew up at 16 years old. I wore out Dirk Bentley's first three records, just wore them out. So, I mean, those, <laughs> those records defined me as a young man and shaped my songwriting. And uh, you can hear that within this record. And it's been, it, that, that smoke, that edge is something to me that's, that's been missing with my music that I wanted there. Uh, not to say I, I don't love the songs I put out. I do. But this record just has a different quality to it that I really admire and, and love. And I'm excited to put it out there. Well, I'm excited that we got you on the podcast. Huge fan. Always listen to your music. Always have. Always will. We'll be following you. And hopefully I can get to a show pretty soon. I would love to go to King Fest, but I don't know if that schedule is going to work out. Well, come but, on. Yeah. I hope, I hope it does. <laughs> so one last question before we wrap things up. If you were a cocktail, what would you be? I would be a smoky mezcal old fashioned. Right. There it is. Good, strong drink like your music. Good and strong. I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a big old fashioned <laughs> guy, but I don't I don't drink whiskey anymore. So it has to be mezcal tequila. That way you get to smoke, <laughs> you get to sleep, you get the flavor. Just sit back and relax. Yeah, I have I have a confession to make. I had never had an old fashioned, but like all the guests coming on were saying, I'd ask them that question, and they would say old fashioned. So I was at the uh, T Texas Country Music Awards in Fort Worth last November oh, yeah. last year. Yeah, because we work, we host, I co-host a red carpet, and Kyle does a production, and we just we just love that that whole time getting to see everyone. So I thought I was going to be a big girl. I was like, I'm going to order me an old fashioned. <laughs> Thank God it was the pre-show night. There you go. It was fine. Oh, yeah. I sipped. I sipped on it a little bit, and yeah. Lord, what you supposed to do? You're supposed to sip on an old fashioned. Yeah. Don't slam it. You're okay. Sipping. Well, it's that wraps sipping. it up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Randall King. Thank you very much. It's been good being on the uh, on on the podcast with you. I appreciate you guys.